few years ago, uh, five years ago, my father died, and my father was a scrap merchant, a self-made man in Hereford. We got, he, I'm his only son, and my mum and dad divorced when I was a kid, and we've got a considerable amount of property in Hereford. After my father died, I'd always been a pretty, pretty much a free man on the land without even realising it. Um, myself and my wife, who I've been with for 25 years, we travelled about the country, my will be deal, a bit of a Dell boy, you know, nothing real, you know, but that was it. Uh, when we came into all this uh, inheritance, far from being a, a blessing, it turned out to be a curse. So, uh, you know, we were getting council tax demands for properties that were vacant and stuff like this. You know, and the council were jumping on us every step of the way. And uh, for a couple of years, I just got my head under the quilt and I just didn't do, didn't do anything about it. Just couldn't cope. So, um, eventually, I got my head from under the quilt and uh, I tur turned on YouTube. And I found a guy called Robert Bernard, a Canadian guy. And uh, basically, uh, my understanding of, of uh, the Commonwealth is based on English law. So I was very interested. And I, I, I'd like to think that I can assess a situation and, and read the chemistry of a, an individual. And from the beginning, I've been in, I've been in Wandsworth, Brixton, Wormwood Scrubs, all these prisons over the years. Mm -hmm. I was in jail for defrauding the United States Treasury. So, uh, Round of applause. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I got found not guilty of that after two months of trial, so as I say, it was an error of day for two months. Um, and I, I like to think that I can judge someone's chemistry, albeit over an uh, electronic medium. And uh, I realised this guy was saying some serious truths, and they hit him to what I've been doing in criminal law. So I started analysing and uh, getting into it a little bit. And so basically, myself and my wife, uh, who because I get loads of ideas and run about and she logifies it and writes it down and sorts it. You know? So you know, we're a team 100% because without her, I wouldn't have no paperwork. You know what I mean? So, um, and I just keep going on what I remember. You know? So this is what we've been dealing with. So what I've got, my, my specificity is, is, was council tax. I thought, let's pick any of them. So I, you know, I've got involved in all this um, traffic tickets, uh, income tax, Probate, whatever. You know, I've, I've, got, I've gone through the whole spectrum, but I, I thought specialise in one area. And um, a lot of the free man stuff is it's very hippie and it's very common law, which is the law and, and all that, which, which is wonderful. But the statutory law in the in the magistrates' courts just steamrolls over. And you write them letters, you do things, and they just act like you're not there. And so what my I thought was, I'm going to get a nuts and bolts out of this, and deconstruct the statute, says Robert Menard says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm standing on the shoulders of giants doing this, you know, this isn't me coming out of this stuff. Um, and so that's what I started to get into. When I came up, put my head from under the quill and started getting into all this, I started realising this is, when I thought that I was being stitched up, for instance, when I got five years for handling counterfeit money, the judge actually said to me that actions like mine threaten the economy of this country. Well, I was in jail for American dollars, you know, it's a paper, right? <laughs> Actually, you're also in the economy of this country. You know what I mean, realistically. Yeah? So, now on the other side of it, um, very serious things have started to happen. Because what I've done, I've just, as I say, I, I've tried to upload, upload as much information as I can about everything. But I'm, I'm specified in one area, because I think if I can chip away at that one area, it will work. And so, what I've done is, I've concentrated on that. Well, I've got about 25 or 30 properties in Hereford. So, of course, now if, one, if someone's a normal person, but one person goes to court and argues their, their council tax, they'll go to court, and what happens is, when you come through the door, you know, you leave all your constitutional rights at the door. You then go into the dock, okay? So we, you're into maritime law and the worship, you know, all the, the words are all connected with maritime law and blah, blah, blah. You leave your constitutional rights at the door. You've consented to this. So if any two individuals in here had a row, and they came to say to me or you or whatever and said, We've, we're having a row and we want you to debate, and uh, we want you to sit in the debate and you know, adjudicate it, fine. I'm honoured to be the adjudicator in the dispute between you two, and then you've actually allowed me to be the adjudicator in it. And I listen to the, to the battle and say, okay, well, based on, well, we give all your cons consent to you on the opinion at the end. So, okay, well, based on the opinion, Yours is better than his, or whatever, yeah? And that's what they're supposed to be doing. But of course, it's not what they're doing. Uh, because this has been going on for so long, there's probably a lot of good people in the court system. 
Um, but what's been happening is they've, they, it's, it's the frog farm conspiracy thing, yeah. where you put a, a frog in a boiling pot of water and it jumps out. But if you turn the heat up very slowly, what happens is it just sits there and gets boiled. And they, they originally went into law and thinking, oh, yeah, listen, you know, I'm here to do the public good. But they've sat there for so long and think, well, I ain't want a liability hearing. I don't know if council tax, any council tax liability hearings? What's he doing in a magistrate's court? Why is he in a magistrate's court? This is a civil issue. action. Surely it should go into the county court. But nobody's questioned it. It's 15 years down the line, so that's the way it is. And so what we've got to do is we've got to start kicking him in the nuts on, the, on these issues. And so I've been doing it in my little way. And whereas I'd say a lot of people have got one property, one council tax bill every year, so to get four hearings has taken four years. Well, within four years, I get a hundred hearings, which means I've got a century of this going on. Yeah, and so I try to analyse it from every perspective, not just going in on a, the common law and um, which we're a common law country, but try and take it from different perspectives to try and analyse what they're doing to us, and uh, it comes to some very very interesting conclusions, which I've got all documented, and we you know tape when we go to court, we tape what we're doing, we put it in notices to the court. Well, they stopped having magistrates rest in the end, didn't they? They stopped, yeah. Well, so after the first hearing, they stopped having magistrates. Because the magistrates, basically, I could see that the chemistry in the room changed. These magistrates, after a two-hour trial, where I got the prosecutor in the box, and the prosecutor states that she thinks she's in an alien environment, and she didn't realise she was working for a corporation called the council. <laughs> Bizarrely, you know. Um, well, if you don't even know who you're working for, what are you doing here, love? You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a council. You know? It's a corporation. You know, check Dun and Bradstreet. So, you know, we've gone through all this. Um, so the next time we get a court, there's a district judge. Well, now I'm thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty cross now. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, magistrates, for all their wrongs, they're three lay people. So technically, they're a quarter of a jury. Right? So, okay, they don't want they're, they're not supposed to know about the law. They're supposed to be sat there as our peers dealing with it. Yeah? Well, what, what that happens with the judge, if he's sat there, he knows the score. He knows, right? So now I'm pretty cross, really, because this is a man who actually knows the, the deception that's going on in this room. So on one occasion, we, a gang just went in, and, and people hear me now. And so they put they weren't expecting. They, they, they stopped me at the magistrate, so for the first time in Hereford, they had a stipendary man, uh, magistrate, which is a judge. So we've gone in, I had a big row with him. So um, basically, they said, call rise, and everybody's they seat, seated. So I said the court will rise and stand. <laughs> so they didn't like they it. Didn't. <laughs> security! Security! Right? security. Right? Like, I'm trying to talk law and they're calling the muscle. You know, basically, you know, <laughs> creating a breach of the peace. But, so this went on. At the end, I dismissed the case and said the court will rise and we all left. So, <laughs> somehow, the, somehow, the... Uh, the, the television knew about it because we frankly they were in the car park outside and we went to the pub around the corner had some breakfast and had a giggle about it. But they seem to know. So I think there's someone inside the system because we serve lots of notices to people, which if anyone's interested, I've got loads of them. Um, so anyway, so the next time I went, we all went down, and of course, you know, when we got to the court door, they'd only let myself and my wife in. They wouldn't let no one else in. So again, this is questionable, but we went in, and I thought, well, look, they're probably thinking, take his little gang away from him, and he won't be so fucking brave, he probably goes for that. <laughs> well, that gets me really angry then, because I really want to kick you in the nuts, because you're really being a twisted individual. So, we go into court then, so I won't have any play with it, it's the same judge. <coughs> he's a judge for hire, you know what I mean? He's like, he's, he's a Clint Eastwood, obviously, you know, he's, he's dealing with arbitrary matches, which he has no power, and he's dealing with it. 